Hey everyone, we are working on practice sheet 21 and we're going to start with an inequality. So as you can tell, an inequality looks almost just like an equation except we do not have an equal sign. So we are going to treat it just the same like an equation, okay? So I'm actually going to just walk you through all of number one and then let you do number two, okay? So on number one, we still want to get that variable by itself. So I need to get rid of plus 10 and times 3. And we always start with the easier steps. So we're going to do minus 10 and minus 10 to the other side. We do the same thing to both sides. If I do it to one side, I do it to the other. So this crosses out and I'm left with 3x. Over here, I have 31 minus 10, which we should all know is 21. And let's make sure we carry down the inequality sign, okay? The next thing that we want to do is get rid of the 3, okay? So times 3, opposite of that, is divide by 3, okay? And then hopefully we know 21 divided by 3 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay? So when we do inequalities, we have less than or greater than, okay? And if we see that sign, we do what's called an open dot. If we see less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, we do a closed dot, okay? This equal sign means it can equal that number, so I'm filling it in. This open symbol, O, open, means it cannot equal that number, okay? It can be anything less than or greater than, depending on the symbol. So in this case, put a box around that, we are doing x is less than 7. That means this is the dot right here, okay? When I do a number line, I do not have to start with 1. This type of number line here is literally used for you to help you out with number two. Now, I made this easy on purpose. I did not do a negative because sometimes we mess up our um, signs and we mess up our number lines, okay? So seven, and I do two to the right and I do two to the left. So think of a normal number line. This would be seven, eight, nine, seven, six, five, okay? So what this tells me is on the 7, I'm going to put an open dot. It cannot equal 7. There's not an equal sign. So I'm actually going to go on because on number 2, I have to circle the ones that are correct. It cannot equal 7. It cannot equal 8. It cannot equal 9. It cannot equal 10. It cannot any, equal any of those because this is saying it is less than 7. X less than 7. It's like pointing in this direction. Okay, this is why we always put that variable first, okay? X is less than 7. That means we're going to shade this way. That means all of these answers down here make this true. Not 7, but it could be 6.9 or 6.8. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0 could be an answer, okay? Now, why could 0 be an answer? Because 3 times... 0, 3 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 10 is 10. 10 is less than 31. That's true. Okay? So your job on number 2 is to circle every answer that could make this true. So think 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. All of those will make this true. Anything more than 7 or more is wrong. You would cross off anything that is 7 or more. So that is one of your earliest experiences with inequalities. Okay. Number 3. This says a box. This should say weighs. I'll fix that. 63 kilograms. If 1 pound equals 0 0.45 kilograms or 45 hundredths kilograms, how many pounds does the box weigh? So we can, if we want, we can do dimensional analysis where I start with 63 kilograms. Do I want kilograms? No. I put kilograms on bottom, pounds on top. 
I can do that, right? But I can also set up a proportion, okay? And if I set up a proportion, I would look, and I can see I have kilograms. I have one pound equals zero and 45 hundredths kilograms, and I want to know pounds. So if I were you, I like the idea of a proportion, even though I taught y'all dimensional analysis. This is a good what a good way to practice. So I can go on and put kg. Okay. If I do, I would put 63 kg here and 0 0.45 here. Okay. That's how I would do that because those are kilograms and kilograms. Then I know one pound. Well, what does one pound go with? Well, one pound equals 0 0.45. That means one would go here. Okay? And I don't know, I should have put that one pound. Um, I do not know how many pounds that will equal. So your job is to cross multiply that. If you don't understand that, you can say, okay, 63 kg. I don't want kilograms, kilograms goes down, pounds, which is LB, goes on top. One pound is 0 0.45 kilograms, but you're going to end up doing the same thing. You're going to end up dividing by 0 0.45. Okay, so watch that decimal. Okay, number four, we're back to percents. Hopefully we remember. A dictionary regularly costs $35 at Bookstop. The dictionary is on sale for 30% off. What is the sale price? Okay, that means how much I pay. So sale price, I have to figure that out. So if a dictionary costs $35, right, that's like my of, that's my total whole original. I want 30% off. So remember, we change the percent to a decimal. We are not working on this right now, so this might be just a nice review. Change the percent to a decimal and multiply. Okay. I'm going to put 0.3 as opposed to 0.30. Now, I need to know what it is. Well, 0.3 is the off. So whatever I get here, that's how much I'm saving. I have to subtract that to figure out the sale price. Okay. Okay, now we are going to do circumference. You're going to do this one by yourself. Use the formula chart. Now, over here, the one thing I will remind you of is, if, is this radius or diameter. Hopefully you remember it is radius. So write your formula for circumference with radius. Then substitute those numbers in and solve it. Number six. You're going to solve this one by yourself, but I will tell you, remember this is division, so your last step should be multiplying by negative three. That's what you're going to do, okay? And then I'm going to leave you with number seven. I will tell you, I think number seven, I believe, is a decimal, okay? I believe it will be a decimal answer. Y'all can do those. We've been working on these. Okay, number eight. So you're going to do this. It says, name the angle pair. What is the value of x? Okay. So hopefully we know this is a right angle. This is a corner. So write the word. What's the word? Okay. What's our word for this? Look on your angle pair sheet. Okay. And we know C990, right? So the end point of our equation is 90. You all know I like to start with my x, 4x plus 3 plus 15, okay? You can solve it. You can combine these two first. You can subtract 15 first, but get x all by itself. Number nine, quick review. Circle the numbers that are integers. 
So remember, you need to cross out decimals and fractions. Integers are everything you know except decimals and fractions unless they're trying to trick you. Okay? Circle everything else that's left. And number 10. Hopefully we remember when we're doing division, we start with Texas. Texas. So I'm going to let you do this one. Divide by. We're going to do Texas here. 5 times 2 is 10. Plus 2 is 12. And the bottom number is 5. And remember, we do keep, change, flip. Okay? So that means I'm going to keep whatever I get for this fraction, change this to a multiply, and flip so that it will be 5 over 12. What I will tell you is there is a relationship with these two numbers. If you are listening, use that relationship. Okay? And simplify.